Jesus, hallelujah. We come to glorify your name, hallelujah. And to worship you, we are to praise on us, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, because we need you more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your name, hallelujah. Hallelujah.
right now, Father. We need your presence. We need your anointing. We need to carry us through, Lord God. Hallelujah. We need you, Father. We need your Holy Ghost fire. We need your anointing, dear God. Without you, we cannot do nothing, dear God. Hallelujah. We need you. We need you. We need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 My hope is in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is your hope in the Lord today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah.
the center, the center of our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are in the center of everything that is going on in this earth right now, God. Hallelujah. You are not all by yourself and you are in control. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, O God. We bless your name, Jehovah Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For there is none like you, O God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
opportunity Thank you, Jesus. to try to do this song for you. Take time out for Jesus. 
He took time for you. Take time out for Jesus, because he took time for us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. At this time, we have the word of God. We pray that God bless his servant as he comes to minister in the word. God bless you. Glory to God. I bless you. Bless you. In, the name of the Lord. in the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for this wonderful day. Thank God for this wonderful day. Take time out to greet those that we haven't seen for a while. So glad to see you. Amen. And today we are blessed to have parents. Children and grandchildren yeah. in the house of the Lord. Amen. Under normal circumstances, I would call names, but I wouldn't be calling names because of the you know this situation. But we are so happy to see you. Amen. We are encouraged. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And today, we want to engage your attention in a subject called time management. Time management. Now, what is time? You see, all these fancy definitions. How many hours in a day? How many hours in a day? 24. Am I hearing you? 24. 24. Come on, you let it doubt yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And to think that you and I can manage our time. <laughs> when the Lord gave me this subject to bring, in fact, I was dealing with one person on time and their, the way they're managing time. And the Lord said to me, it ain't about that individual. It's about all of us have to learn to manage our time. And you know a subject like this is quite interesting. True. Because consciences are speaking to people even now. 24 hours in a day. And you know God speaks to you in various ways. And the one way in which he spoke to me in the sort of graphical form. This would probably make it easy for you to understand. Quote. You need to see it up there. If it's like a graph. Or it's like a pie. Okay? It's like a pie. It will get there. Right. It's like a pie. Mm -hmm. Whether you thought of it this way or not, how much time do we give to the Lord? You see a pie chart there? That's the pie. And this is a bar chart. And what I was looking at was the average person in a day, especially if you're working. You get it from sleeping, and if you're a normal person, that's how normal you are, you take some time out. I'd better pause here. What should you do first? Talk to me, talk to me. Now, since you could not put yourself to sleep, and since you could not protect yourself during sleep, talk to me. What should you do first? Are you not hearing so well? You should take the first time out to thank God. Amen. Amen. Now what you will do after this is your business. Mm -hmm. Because you could not make yourself sleep. You could take tablets to sleep. Uh, many have tried that and still didn't sleep and they got ill after. Mm -hmm. And you cannot make yourself wake up either. That's right. So can you make yourself wake up? No. And could you have protected yourself while you were asleep? No. Okay. So what's the first thing you're going to do? Let me hear it loud and clear. Thank God for waking up. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And for, and for protecting us. Oh, yes. In this world. Their hearts are so wicked. Anyhow. And then you want to, I would assume, refresh yourself. Probably have a little breakfast. Or prepare breakfast. Get dressed. And you don't have much time to hang around if you're working. You got to get transportation. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. Either the bus or some transportation to get from where you are to work or to school mm -hmm. or whatever you do. Yes. So another hour gone. And if you're working, you put in three, four hours and then lunch, lunch time. And lunch time is usually an hour. Yes. Mm -hmm. And after that, you put in another four hours or whatever. And if, if you're going to school, you know, you have the first session and then you have lunch and then you have the next session. 
and then you're looking for transportation to get home again. And when you get home, you want a little mini time. Pass me by me time. Yes. A little bit of time to at least yes. Lord I thank you. Yes. <laughs> a rough day, but Lord I thank you. Yes. I made it. Yes. And you gotta especially in COVID times, mm -hmm. you are going to get off those clothes, I assume. And put on different clothes, right? Have a shower, whatever you do, a little personal thing. And then you're looking to have dinner. And after dinner, how much time do you have? How much time do you really have? Before it's time to sleep again. Mm -hmm. So if I can just go back up that you can see this thing. That pie chart says that the black area there is the eight hours that you spend sleeping. There are people who have decided that they don't have all this time to sleep. They can only, you know, they can only take, let's say, half of that. But after a while, you will discover that you will be in trouble. Because your body needs to restore itself. That's right. But that other reddish color, not too hot on colors, represents the time you spend at work. Another color there is the time you spend transporting to and from. And how much time does God get in there? Are you asking a question? These people in Nazareth. Least time. When you look at the bar chart, the spiritual was two hours. Two hours out of the twenty-four. The sleeping was eight hours. The personal happened to get to three, but it ain't really true that you had to do, to do much of any other thing. Transport to work, seven or eight, lunch and dinner, an hour and an hour. So if you're working or if you're at school, you will realize that you really don't have much time to yourself. No. Hmm. I've heard people say, I'd like a little more me time. But there ain't much me time for you if you're working. But you know, the scripture comes back to me. Seek ye first and to think that everybody here can see. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Huh? And all oh. these things will be added to you. Right? <laughs> and although we know all that, we spend our lives going after all the other things and leaving out the first. That's right. Speak it, Lord. <laughs> I need to pause sometimes yeah. to let you think, mm -hmm. to let you reflect. And we are using God's breath. Anybody yeah. here before yeah. God's breath? The yeah. undertaker would have a job. Yeah. <laughs> we are using God's breath. And we envy God out of the one out of the ten percent that we give him. Yes. Oh my God. Having shown you that picture which the Lord showed me in my spirit, and thank God I managed to get it on a, in a graphical form that you can see it, like a pie chart. And I also got some help from others, but I can't do, can't do all of it in one day. Showing the 24 hours all around like a clock. Mm -hmm. And some of us know that from the time we wake up, Something is calling us. Yes. Something is calling us. Come. Come. You can say it today, not me. <laughs> Something is calling you. Come. Come. And before you can even deal with the body, 
I don't, I think that this bathing time is too much. Because I, I, while I'm bathing, I can't look at my phone. I just said it. I can't, this thing got you. So many things you can't say. Jesus. You're challenged when you're here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I meet you outside, it will tell you. Mm -hmm. Time management is an idea of aiming and achieving your target by using your resources or sources efficiently. Mm -hmm. It has a great connection with managing the self and surroundings. Jesus. Time management skill involves planning the day ahead first mm -hmm. and then organizing what to do accordingly. <laughs> if you wake up without a plan tomorrow morning, what are you going to do? <laughs> Somebody said it over there. Drift. When you hear that a boat is drifting, how do you feel for the persons on board? Huh? But look how many times we have been drifting, have no plan, no purpose. There's so many scriptures. Huh? I remember man of God turned to the children of Israel and said, how long, how long are we going to procrastinate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big, big word. And somebody said, and I believe it, it is a thief of time. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You procrastinate about something, whatever that thing is, and it gets worse. If you have a little pinch, something, something on your foot or hand or whatever, and you don't deal with it in the early, and you procrastinate, yes. by the time you deal with it, it will cost you a hundred times more yeah. than if you had dealt with it. Jesus. And sometimes it's too late to deal with it. So pro procrastination will steal. Yeah. How long? The man of God asked him. Mm. He said, choose out people. Mm. And if you all will recall, sometimes we overlook these things. Mm. How many years did the children of Israel spend in the wilderness? And the journey could have been done in how much time? A week to 11 days. 40 years! Some of us have been putting off and postponing. Giving our lives to Christ for so many years. I have suffered the consequences of it all along. And all the benefits that were there My God. for us to get. We were going after the things and the things were running from us. Yes. 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 Let me say it again. Yes. We were going after the things and the things were running from us. When we fail to do what we are supposed to do, seek God first. So, you've got 24 hours. What are you going to do with it? In a day. And then what you do in a week. And what you do in a month. And at the end of the day, do you ever stop and ask yourself the question, what have I achieved today? Can you see any, any hands of any person? Any hands? And sometimes you, you feel like if you, you would slap yourself around you. I, I, I haven't achieved what I set up to achieve today. What's wrong with me? And I kind of was saying, but Lord, but why this subject at this time and all that? He said, he said, you're thinking. 
the children coming out of school mm -hmm. on holiday. Mm -hmm. And the enemy got plans for every one of you. My Lord. What you will do with the time. And some of you, if you manage to make it back to school, the teachers will start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Some of you might even not even be able to spell your own name. My God. You saying, Pastor, what are you saying? Pastor, what are you saying? Some of them subjects like chemistry and things, so it's probably only remember one thing. What is oxygen now? <laughs> is it N or O? You brainwash, you mess up because you take the time and you didn't plan what you would do with your time. Planning the day ahead first and then organizing what to do accordingly. Being able to manage time contributes to the increase of one's productivity. The completion of the backlog tasks and personal development. Now this is not something specifically for the church, uh, church or for only. Time management aims to evaluate the time available and do most of the work during this time. Depending on the person's title or work environment, the task must be completed. Time management is about completing tasks within a certain period of time without difficulty. And it goes on and on. On. Let's start here now. Tips for efficient time management. Define your goal. In this congregation, year after year, we remind each other that we have to have goals. Yes. If you don't have a goal, what are you going after? Can you imagine the footballers huh? out there? <laughs> I'm running after a ball. And falling down, tripping up one another with no plan. And some are supposed to be in defense. And some are supposed to attack. Am I right? So when you are supposed to be attacking and you defending, you know what it is. Time management. Define your goal. Have a to-do list. To-do list. Ain't got time for that. You know people will say that. Yeah. I don't have time for a to-do list. That's right. So you don't know if you're doing or not. Mm -hmm. Because you say you don't got time for a to-do list. Yes, Pray or tell You see that one there? Pray or tell I come to the stage in my life that I say, Lord, I don't know for you. But I can't determine my priorities. Yeah. Yeah. I got any witnesses in here? Yes. 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 When you look at the whole gamma of things to be done, yeah. Huh? You, 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 you throw up your hands and say, oh, Lord, I don't know where to start. Yeah. And I got to go right back and seek God first. Yeah. Because God's Holy Spirit wants to show you and yeah. wants to show me what to do first. Yeah. Yeah. I should be charging for this. <laughs> but you all keep being very quiet. <clears throat> but I ain't charging. So open up and respond. Amen. Yeah. What are you going to do first? Sometimes the thing that you do first could be left till last year, right. till next year. Yes. It happens to me, you know. Because the things that you like to do, you'll be encouraged to do, even if it's next week's work. And leave the things that you and I don't like next year <laughs> and then if it's something involved with government and overdue expenses or like in power you know what will happen or telephone you know what will happen there's some things that you just can't postpone you just can't procrastinate about You've got to get with it. Yes. Prioritize. Distribute the time. 
since the time is short, you got to distribute it. I can't do all of this today. I have to leave some for tomorrow. And God help me. Which ones are going to leave for tomorrow? And make sure when they do the ones that must be done today, today, and the ones that can be done tomorrow, leave them for tomorrow. Distribute is done. Organize and plan. Sometimes you may have to involve somebody else. True. But that person has plans of his or her own. Yes. Right. So if you don't, um, Joe, I don't think there are any Joes around there. Joe, come and drop me down the road. Duh. That's another big thing you're hearing of Joe. Why in the middle of something? I can't leave now. But if you had told Joe from yesterday, I would like you to take me tomorrow. Joe would have planned different. So you have to organize and plan. Let's say have a group work. And at first I didn't do like that because sometimes when you have a group working and you don't have that, you know, cohesion and everybody not working together, you don't seem to get very far. But the truth is that if a group is working in unity, in unity, the achievement is tremendous. Avoid being stressful. What are the advantages of this here? Delivering the work on time, whatever, what, or whatever situation. Providing a high quality of work. Using the sources efficiently. Reducing the stress and anxiety in work. Look, if in a day you don't know what you have to do, you don't have anything written down. And you haven't even taken time out to think about it. Things will pop up. You are keeping very quiet. If you are a parent in here and you have children, children will have their plans of their own. Don't tell you anything about it. And at the last minute, want you to do this or do that. Is that right? Absolutely. 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 You see, you're forcing me to push you in a corner now. Reducing the stress and anxiety in work life. Sometimes, well, say A, you gotta say B. You leave when you go to a uh, supermarket or whatever, and then somebody calls and says, What about? I forgot so and so. So that's the benefit of the cell phone now. Mm -hmm. Because yes. if you didn't, you might have to get home and then go out again. Mm -hmm. So it is good to have a plan. Yes. Improving the work life balance. Contributing to the self development and career growth. Mm. And you may say, well, this is something to do with school or this is something to do with work. But if, you know, every one of us are involved right in here. Amen. Amen. Mm. Reduce costs as tasks are prioritized. Increasing your leadership skills, of course, because you become a better leader. Mm -hmm. Reducing the time waste in the workplace or wherever you are. Avoiding the procrastination. Lord have mercy. I started on that one. What are the advantages of a poor time management plan? An unstructured time management plan can cause all your tasks to fail. Yeah. Doing many different jobs at once can be tiring. Yeah. Too many things are yeah. tiring. You can find no time for entertainment. Look, I can disagree there. See that? Eh? Some of us find all the time for entertainment. Oh, and none for anything else. Mm -hmm. Undefined goals can lead to inadequate planning and resource consumption. Poor time management can also increase costs and lead to rework. Don't worry about rework at all. Because when you have to rework something, you know it costs more. It's yes. obvious. Yes. Tasks that are not adequately scheduled can cause mental and physical Mental and physical stress. We got a couple of notes there. Ecclesiastes we had today. Time for this and a time for that. And when we get our times mixed up, we are in real trouble. 
it says here, timing is important. All the experiences listed in these verses are appropriate at certain times. The secret to peace with God is to discover, accept, and appreciate God's perfect timing. God's perfect timing. Not our timing. That's right. Our timing is now. Mm -hmm. okay. The danger is to doubt or resent God's timing. The danger is to doubt or resent God's timing. This can lead to despair, rebellion, or moving ahead without his advice. Mm -hmm. Can any of us do a little introspection and see how much time we have wasted? <laughs> Huh? Sure. Alright. Let's start with this one. We have to realize the brevity of life. That life is short. <laughs> Psalm 90 verse 12 says, Teach us to number our days yeah. that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And let me pause here. Some of the younger ones in our mess and on Zoom and who will watch this video, you assume because you are in your teens that you have many years to go. True. Mm -hmm. Is true. that true? Yes. Yes. true? Is that true? That is true. I want to know if it's true. I said that is true. A person that is 16 or 17 might only have a few months to live. <laughs> and a person that is 90 might have 10 more years to live. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. So, you do not know how much time you have. And I do not know how much time I have. So what should we do? That we may gain a heart of wisdom. There's a note there in verse 17. Psalm 90, verse 17. Teach us to number our days. Sometimes, you know, we... we, like, we like, they lost. That's right. Because our days are numbered, we want our work to count, to be effective and productive. We desire to see God's eternal plan revealed now and for our work to reflect his presence. If we feel dissatisfied with this life and all its imperfections, remember our desire to see our work established and its place there by God. But our desire can only be satisfied in eternity. Until then, we must apply ourselves to loving and serving God. Amen. 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 You, you can't do it on your own. Cannot. Cannot. Everyone in here has strength. Cannot. You too. Genesis 6, 3. I laugh at this one. My spirit will not contend with humans forever, for they are mortal. Their days will be 120 years. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first, so to speak, reduction. And for us to live 120 years, now we would be laughing, we would be glad. Mm -hmm. But God was making a point. Yes. Yes. And after that, it was reduced, you know. Yes. And you all know. Yes. All right. So God takes this seriously. Here we're talking about youthful piety. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 12 1. Remember your Creator. In the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years approach when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. Hmm? Ecclesiastes 12, one got a note there too. A life without God can produce a better. Don't, don't go too. A life without God. A life without God can produce a better, lonely, and hopeless old age. Let's hmm. <laughs> hmm. Let's sing. Let's sing. A life centered around God is fulfilling. It will make the days of trouble when disabilities, sickness, 
and handicap causes barriers to enjoy life. Satisfying because of the hope of eternal life. Being young is exciting, but the excitement of youth can become a barrier to closeness with God. Can become? Has become? That's right. Has become? People are using substances that they don't know the effect on the body for the excitement of getting down and boogieing. Huh? And then the doctor got a job. And sometimes the undertaker got a job. My God have mercy. I know. That's true. Go ahead. If it makes young people focus on passing pleasures instead of eternal values, make your strength available to God when it is still yours. During your youthful years, don't waste it on evil or meaningless activities. Meaningless? That's right. Not to me. I enjoy it myself. I don't care what more people say. Then <laughs> live the life already. I can live mine. Uh, that way. Them all and foolish. Go ahead. Don't waste it on evil or meanless activities that become bad habits and make you callous. You see, you see this one, bad habits? That's another whole sermon. If you have developed good habits, huh, they work for you. <laughs> if you have developed bad habits, they don't work for you. Huh? They, work they work for you too. <laughs> Sometimes you are in the habit of saying thanks. And you have said it three, four times before you leave that individual. The person said, but you tell me thanks already. <laughs> but you're in the habit of saying thanks. Yeah. Huh? Amen. And you know it's a one. Mm -hmm. I don't think that one exists. No, we can't, can't try to. <laughs> <laughs> Every other word was an abusive word. And even when he was talking to you in a friendly way. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Watch it. But I ain't seen your soul so for long on it. Every other word can form a sentence. Bad habits. Bad habits. <laughs> But time can also heal many wounds too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw this one here. Oh, time is time. Is here. You see. But it's, this is Genesis 33, 4 to 5. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him. And they wept. And any of you Bible readers can remember about Esau and Jacob? Yeah. Yeah. Esau was sworn to mm -hmm. kill Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. But time yeah. and circumstances yeah. huh, and pressures of life yeah. change both of them. Yeah. Yeah. And there are circumstances that you, you and I have had in our past yeah. that you would say, well, if I see him, <coughs> boy, you're gone. You do not know what he has no, gone no, through no, and no. he doesn't know what you have gone through. Yeah. Yeah. I can give you a quick example here. Quick one. I had in my past a young man working in a plant that I was responsible for for production. But he was an engineering type of individual. He wasn't so fussy about production. He was more interested in the engineering. So when the machines stopped, he would look for the most uh, professional way of fixing the machine and the people are standing around getting paid and there's no production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to him time and again about it as a manager. I said, listen, 
-hmm. I know that what you are planning to do will make this machine better. But you will have to do that in your own time. Yeah. Not when these people are getting yeah. paid. They, they get yeah. paid by the hour. Yeah. And it reached a point where I had to dismiss him, terminate him. And he was cruel. He was cruel. But I didn't just terminate him. I explained to him, the next time I see you, go and start your own business. You like designing and this, go and do your own designing. He didn't want to hear me, but he had little or no choice. A few years later, my wife and I are driving through a parish, a southern parish, and I hear, Mr. Graves! <laughs> and when I look, I saw him. Now, you know this is years, huh? So I either had to touch the accelerator or touch the brakes. <laughs> So I said, my wife is with me. I doubt, he will, I doubt he will kill me with my wife. <laughs> so I hit the brakes. And I stop. I reverse. He said, man, I ain't seen you for years. Man, he said to me, this is my workshop. You know when you fire me at the vets. <laughs> but I went away. And they took your advice. And they started the shop. And look at these designs. And they're looking at these things. And my wife with me there as a witness. I'm marveling. And he told the employees, you see this gentleman here? He is <laughs> He is partly responsible for where you are today. You get it? Yes. yes. You sure you get it? Yes. So at time heal the wounds. Yes. Huh? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Another subject by subordinating earthly duties to heavenly ones. And this is 1 Corinthians 7.29. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Mm -mm. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. This is, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is serious grown boy. This is my wife. I marry she. You can't tell me what to do. I can do what I want. And you may not even want good advice. Those who have wives still need to realize the times that we are in. There's a note there. First Corinthians 7.29 Mm -hmm. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. Yeah. But some people don't believe the time is short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right, yeah. Paul urges all believers to make most of the time before Christ's return. Mm -hmm. Every person in every generation should have this sense of urgency about telling God news to others. Life is short, there's not much time. And it says here again, Paul urges believers not to regard marriage, home, or financial security as the ultimate goals of life. As much as possible, we should live unhindered by the cares of this world, not getting involved with burdensome mortgages. Budgets. Burdensome mortgages? Yes, sir. They don't appear burdensome at the time of taking them out. True. Huh? True. Because you like the spacious bedroom, and the living room, and the TV room, and every other kind of room. Huh? But when you, oh Lord have mercy. If you were to lose your work for any reason, and you know, 
somebody will say he is a real old funny daddy. Because I remember the days when you started with a, a one house. Only a, a man and his wife. And they get up at 16 by 9 and start. I had a little outhouse thing. And then you put on a shed roof, etc., etc. And you didn't have mortgages in those days. Hmm. You worked to what you could get. Yeah. Huh? And yeah. you increased as you went along. Mm -hmm. But boy, mm -hmm. we make it easy for you. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you can't afford it, no down payment yeah. this month. Mm -hmm. No down payment till the new year, but this time it's November. <laughs> <laughs> And then when, when the new year start, and you and you and you work in somewhere that think a little bit tight, say I can have to lay off. People, I can have to lay off a few people. Look. Oh Lord, 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 Lord. Hmm? Yeah, finish it off. Yeah. Not getting involved or burdensome or budgets, investment or debts that might keep us from doing God's work. A married man. Or woman, as Paul points out, must take care of earthly responsibilities. But they should not make every effort to keep them modest, that they should make every effort to keep them modest and manageable. That is the right, that is the right thinking from the man. But there are men that don't worry about it. They're coming down the road. And they meet the door in the road. It's their door, you know. Then they get home, see the door missing. Yeah, I'm with the door. <laughs> look. Look. <laughs> Time management by serious living. Be very careful, Ephesians 5.15. Then how we how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Ephesians 5:15 to 17. Mm -hmm. A note there. 5:15. By saying the days are evil, Paul was communicating with his sense of urgency because of evil persuasiveness. We need the same sense of urgency because our days are also difficult. We must keep our standards high, act wisely, and do good whenever we can. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody praise God. Amen. Spend more time thinking about eternity. Psalm 39, 5 to 6. You have made my days a mere hand breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath. Even those who seem secure. You see, even those who seem secure. Some seem very secure. Hmm. 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 Surely everyone goes around like a mere phantom. In vain they rush about. Heaping up wealth. Without knowing whose it will finally be. Wow. Give you a thumbs up there, girl. It don't matter who get hurt. True. True. Once I make the money, the bottom line, and you don't even know who is going to spend what you leave. Yes. 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 There's a note there, my brother. The brevity of life is a theme throughout the books of Psalm, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. Jesus also spoke about it. Ironically, people spend so much time securing their lives on earth and spend little or no talk about where they will spend eternity. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Little or no time. Little or no deception. David realized that amassing riches 
I'm busily accomplishing for a task will make no difference in eternity. Few people understand that their only hope is in the Lord. Amen. The only hope is in the Lord. And we sang the song to that effect. Our hope. Amen. I'm going to move on. Many need time to think about the gospel. Think about what? The gospel? You're making sport. I'm thinking about my future, my career. <laughs> I'm thinking about the home I would like to have. A home with a swimming pool. Huh? I want a double car garage. And two of the best vehicles around. Hmm? I want my whole house air conditioned. And those are my goals. And you could talk what you like. Gospel. But when you are a very rich man and you are living in an area where there are very poor people, but then we rich people don't live in poor people area. Hmm. But poor people can get in your area though. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But when somebody is working for you who is a born again Christian and he or she knows Christ as Savior and Lord, you don't have to be looking around no. to see what they're going to be taking and what they're not going to be taking. Right. 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 Only one person applauded because that person is a trustworthy person. But the gospel brings change. Amen. Yes. Oh, yeah. Amen. So, Amen. I remember this same elder here that we live in. In the, in the past, in big crusades, when monies were big in the crusades, mm -hmm. carnal minded Christians looking at him with a kooky eye. Mm -hmm. I said, Listen, don't look at him so. That man ain't gonna take a set that don't belong to him. That after he born again. Amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But then everybody you can say that for. That's so right. you and I have a responsibility to live. Yes. Amen. That somebody can say that yes. for. Yes. 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 yes, yes, that's true. The woman yes. in John 4 15, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty. I have to keep coming here to draw water. <laughs> she, she really didn't understand the program at all. <laughs> she was like many of us. Yeah. More, Lord, more. <laughs> more food, more clothes. More this, more that. And where are we going to put it? And where are we going to take it? Lord, have mercy upon us. There's a note there which explains it. The woman mistakenly believed. That mistakenly she, believed. That if she received water Jesus offered, she would not have to return to the well each day. She was interested in Jesus' message because she thought it could make her life easier. But if that were always the case, people would accept Christ's message for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. yes. Christ did not come to take away challenges. Stop there. <laughs> Christ did not come to take away challenges. Go ahead. That's right. Hmm. But to change us on the inside Amen. 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 and to empower us to deal with problems from God's perspective. Amen. So you are here today. You are here today. And you are wondering why you still have challenges. God didn't come to, uh, to stop the challenges. Jesus didn't come to stop the challenges. But to empower you and I to deal with the challenges and to overcome the challenges. They've read it somewhere, they believe it. Yeah. That the enemy don't go after who you got already. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. Some people will say, well, I don't know what you're going through. All that I ain't going through nothing because you're, because you're a hypocrite. Because you're a hypocrite. The enemy don't go after hypocrites. We gonna go after hypocrites. They belong to him already. So when you are facing this challenge here and that challenge there, know that God has 
so is Holy Spirit Amen. giving you and I the power Hallelujah. to overcome the challenges and rise. And you don't have to feel embarrassed because you're going through challenges. All they do for he or all they do for she don't seem to be this and don't seem to be that. There are challenges. Yes, so what are you going to do? Trust God. He will work it out. Amen. He has worked it out. He is working it out. And he will work it out. By consistent example before the world. You see that? Colossians 4, 5. Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Let your conversation... <laughs> da, da, da. He talking my business. Let your conversation be always full of grace. That is not capital G, grace. Grace. Seasoned with salt. So that you may know how to answer everyone. Amen. You can't do it yourself. You can't do it yourself at all. Season with salt. <laughs> Only last night, one of our daughters was telling us about the situation. And she said, the person said to her, I curse you. And she said, without thinking, and I bless you. I know someone in here, I'm not going to call it in. When you get home, you're full of sins and say, I bless you. I bless you to get better. I bless you to understand that there's a God. Understanding God's perspective of time, Psalm 70, 5-2. You say I choose the appointed time. It is I who judge with equity. Psalm 75 verse 2. God will act when he is ready. Hold a minute. Wow. Wow. Everybody in here. Yes. 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 God will act when he is ready. Children have difficulty grasping the concept of time. It is not time yet. It's not a reason they easily understand because they only comprehend the present. Mm -hmm. As limited human beings, we can't understand God's perspective about time. We want everything now. No. 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 On the way, we yes. want everything yes. No. Yes. no. Unaware that God's timing is better. Yes, is. When God is ready, He will do what He needs to be done. Amen. Not what we would like Him to do. We may be as impatient as children, but we must not doubt the wisdom of God's timing. Wait for God to reveal His plan. Don't take matters into your own hands. Lovely. Wow. Lovely. Wow. So true. But there's some are asking rain. Yes. Matthew 24, 2. Yes. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him. But he tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Matthew 24, 2. And he also got it in Luke 17, 20. Once on being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus replied, the coming of the kingdom of God is not something that can be observed. Then Luke 21, 7, teacher, they asked, when will you see these things happen? And what will be the sign that they're about to take place? And then Acts, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Because... The people were more interested in, they wanted to get rid of the Romans. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to get rid of the Romans, they wanted to get rid of the hardship. And the, seeing that Jesus feed uh, 5,000 mm -hmm. <laughs> little bread and fish. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, well, he, would, he would make a good leader. 
Huh? How many people he healed huh? and all that wanted him. They look at we look at things on a very earthly. Yeah, earth. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could read any note, but yeah, mm -hmm. six or seven. Like other Jews, the, the disciples shot under their Roman rulers. They wanted Jesus to free Israel from Roman power and then become their king. Mm -hmm. Jesus replied that God the Father sets the timetable for all events, mm -hmm. worldwide, national, and personal. If you want changes that God isn't making immediately, don't become impatient. Instead, don't become impatient. Instead, trust God's timetable. Amen. 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 That covers all of them. Amen. Yeah. Acts 1, 6 to 7. It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. Amen. That's a red letter. Yes. Jesus. It is not for you to know. to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority. Mm -hmm. Want to have a quick little discussion here now? Mm -hmm. Proverbs nineteen fifteen. Laziness brings on deep sleep and the shiftless go. <laughs> now this was the sin of your sister Sodom, Ezekiel 16, 40, She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed and unconcerned that they did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and did detestable things before me. Therefore I did away with them as you have seen. Amen. You got to know that God is a God of justice. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yes. Go ahead. It is easy to judge and condemn Sodom, especially for its terrible sexual sins. Ezekiel reminded Judah, however, that Sodom was destroyed because its people were arrogant, My God. overfed and unconcerned about the needy people within their reach. Oh my God. It is easy to be selective in what we consider gross sin. If we do not commit such horrible sins as adultery, homosexuality, mm -hmm. stealing, and murder, we may think we are living good enough lives. My Lord, my Lord. Mm -hmm. But what about sins like arrogance, yeah. gluttony, big ego? and indifference to the needy. These things may not be as shocking to you as the others, but they are also forbidden by God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That Amen. speaks for itself. Yes. Yes. Matthew 23 to 4, about 9 in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard. And he will pay you whatever is right. And what was right? Does anybody in here know yeah. How much less did they get than the ones who started early? I hear somebody say they do this. They get the same. So even though you, you and I have procrastinated, even though we have neglected our salvation, even though we have gone astray, the payment will still be appropriate. Yeah. This is the time. Now is the time. Manage your time. Yeah. Now is the time. Tomorrow is not promised. Not promised. And then, as I was going through, I realized that idle words. But you got to speak idle words in time too. Matthew 12, 36. But I tell you that everyone will have to give a count on the day of judgment for every right. empty word they have spoken. Mm -hmm. Because when you speak empty words, you speak in them in time. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. huh? yes. You're using the time that you should be used to encourage somebody to speak idle words. Mm -hmm. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Mm -hmm. In 1 Timothy 5.13, you can learn to be idle too. Yes. Besides, they get into the habit of being idle. 
are going about from house to house. And not only do they become idlers, but also busybodies who talk nonsense, saying things they ought not to. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes and give the enemy no opportunity for slander. Mm -hmm. Some have been fat, already turned away to follow Satan. Lord. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Warning against idleness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle mm -hmm. and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you. There's Paul, you know. Nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, we worked mm -hmm. night and day, laboring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this not because we did not have a right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. Mm -hmm. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. <laughs> we hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. <laughs> they are not busy, but busy bodies. And that was Second Thessalonians 3, 16. Brethren, in short, we have people who are interrupting us. We have people who are calling at times with information that we could do without. So true. So true. If people are not calling, the cell phone is calling. There are some people who know more about the news than the newscasters. They always seem to know everything. Don't tell me that they don't have neglected areas. I'm not going to believe you. Mm -hmm. Misdirected. The opportunity is now Amen. to change. Amen. 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 I saw a film last night. I, I didn't plan on this, it happened. A young man, this is history, who used to stay outside a bank and shine the shoes of the rich people as they went in and out of the bank. His job was, his job as a young boy, shining shoes. But he wasn't just shining shoes. He was listening to the conversation yeah. Yeah. and trying to learn the secrets of how to get wealth. And when he had gotten enough, he used to write it down. So you see a fella, you might see a fella outside shining shoes. You don't know what he's doing. You think he's just shining shoes? Without going into the details of that, eventually, he went as far as to be able to buy a bank because he was turned back from a loan, etc., etc. But he was able eventually to buy a bank because he put his time to good use. So even if you shine his shoes, don't only shine his shoes, listen. Listen to what the rich and famous are saying. And you too, if that is your desire can become rich. Amen. So, since we do not have elders, mm -hmm. since we do not know how, how long we have to live, mm -hmm. since we do not know about tomorrow, but what, what should we do? What should we do? God is willing to forgive us. Amen. God is willing to show us the way yes. out of our situation. Yes. But we've got to acknowledge that he is capable and able and that we can manage our time. Amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. Amen. So let the words of our mouth bless them. Let the words of our mouth, words of our mouth, and the meditation of our heart, and the meditation of our heart, be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. O Lord, our strength, our strength, and our redeemer, and our redeemer, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you're standing, if there's anybody that wants to request prayer. Do so now by the raise of your hand, and God knows what you would be rest. You're raising your hand for. You see hands. Amen. Amen. It's not the length of the prayer, it is from the heart. Amen. Father, you see those hands, including mine. These hands are raised to you. Amen. We are looking to you. It is not how good I can pray because it ain't about that. Thank it is you, about Jesus. me asking a question Hallelujah. and your people, including me, yes, raising Lord. our hands. Yes, Lord. You know you. whether we need deliverance. Yes. You know whether we need salvation. People, you know whether we need healing. Yes, All Lord. I'm asking, dear Father, is that as we have cooperated in raising our hands, you will grant our request. Oh my God. Yes, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. With thanksgiving. Amen. The people say, Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated for a moment. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May he cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon thee and give thee peace, peace. now and forevermore. May God bless all of you. For prayer and counsel in your walk with God, please email us at armoroflightbarbados at gmail.com. Thank you and may God bless you.